Ukraine tensions. NATO sends ships and fighter jets to Eastern Europe. Wow. Could you imagine this? There are two types of um, people. Governments that rule their people and nation. And then you have the ordinary people. The people who live everyday lives, go about their businesses, and are not too concerned about launching a nuclear weapon or starting a war. We generally want peace and have our own lives to take care of. But then you have politicians and they have a different agenda and this happens all over the world. This can be a very dangerous thing by having a disconnect between politicians and the normal people. I would say the same thing for media. When you look at media, you should take media with a pinch of salt and not trust media 100%. There's some parts of media that's very good and useful, but the rest of the media you got to take with a pinch of salt because media can bump up things and exaggerate situations, making them seem far worse than what they really are. Now let's take a look at um, the Ukraine tensions and the situation with Russia, Ukraine, America and NATO. Now I truly believe this is my my opinion, my point of view, and from my knowledge of what I know, and there are many people in the same situation, for what they know with politics, their, their, their knowledge is not as high as the actual politicians in governments, in, in control of their people, because the governments, like I said, have a different agenda, and there are things that the normal people and um, of nationalities do not know what their government is doing, it's all secrecy. So for what, um, for my position, what I know of the U.S. of Russia is, um, in my opinion, the Ukraine is family part of Russia. Ukraine belongs to the Eastern Bloc, and Ukraine is a huge security concern for Russia. In my opinion, my country, the U.K., from where I was born, and I come from should have nothing to do with sending troops and weapons to Ukraine which can help kill Russian people. This is very evil for me, I'm sorry it's my country but I'm against what my country is doing. They're sending, tr they're going to send troops and weapons that can kill Russian soldiers and Russian people and cause a lot more problems for Ukraine. I actually feel sorry for Russia to having to put up with all this bullying because to me it's pure bullying and unfairness and the people of the real world do not know what's really going on. I'm going to give you one example of UK US bullying. Just take a look at the war they had in Iraq and remember the famous infamous words of weapons of mass destruction. Tony Blair, George Bush. Tony Blair and George Bush. Weapons of mass destruction. What a lot of bull. And you pull the wall over the nation's eyes, like I said, the ordinary people, with the power of media. And you get them to back their governments, poison their minds, and then launch an, ille an illegal attack on Saddam Hussein. They did not find any weapons of mass destruction. Destruction. It was all about oil, greed. So I'm just going to speak about this, and it's freedom of speech, and it's my way of expressing myself. And I believe there are many people out there that know that our governments are highly corrupt. So let's take a look at this situation in the Ukraine, where Russian troops have massed their their um their cells on the border of Ukraine about 10 miles and you could ask yourself the question why is Russia ex um, take, making an exercise they haven't invaded but they just made uh, doing the military exercises on the board of Ukraine ask yourself why they must obviously through intelligence notice something happening in the Ukraine and do not like the way the direction in which the Ukraine is heading like let's say for instance Ukraine 
Ukraine thinking of joining NATO. This would mean NATO weapons planted in Ukraine, which there are already examples of that. NATO encroaching, moving closer to Russia, right on their doorstep, right in their backyard. This is so dangerous. And I'm going to give you an example why this is so dangerous. You must remember that the East and West, Russia and America, forget the UK and Europe, Russia and America, great enemies. We had a Cold War after the, first, the Second World War. You had the Berlin Wall split and you had the nuclear arms race. Then you had the fall of the USSR, formerly called the Soviet Union. Then you had the breakaway republics, Kazakhstan, Ukraine, Belarus, etc. Then they formed their own governments. Now you had the Western um, alliances called NATO expanding themselves more towards the east, more expansion of NATO towards the east. Now surely any Western diplomat must use their thick skull and know what's going on here and not fool the people and must understand how the Russians feel that you, you, you're threatening their very existence of security and by what I mean by security you have to look at it from the Russians point of view from what they went through during the Second World War the great losses of Russian troops fighting against the Germans the great battle of Leningrad Stalingrad that war was hell the Russians lost so many people and look at the temperatures that which, in which they fought in minus 40 degrees sometimes minus 60 it's some deadly deadly cold weather inhuman for anyone to be able to operate in and such vast territory to cover and the Russians the Iron Curtain they saved Moscow from Hitler they beat them incredible and I believe that Russia saved the rest of the planet from Nazi Germany and Hitler and the reason why I believe that is because Russia had many resources oil minerals etc which the Germans wanted so the Germans went towards Russia which is a target and if Germany can conquer Russia they conquered the whole world very easily the UK would be no problem still go for UK and attack UK with full force the Germans went into Russia they spread out their forces everywhere and that's where they got weak and they couldn't take on Russia they underestimated Russia so now this loss of Russia Russia was so frightened they developed the Iron the Curtain the USSR the Soviet Union the CCCP now, after many years like, if, like we know everything changes we have the breakup of, of this republic and now you have NATO NATO expanding you have America make no mistake I love America but I just don't like their politics I don't like their aggression in America the guns in America they murder rate America America is a very um, a gun ridden country they, they like to kill the, uh, the only, only nation to have ever dropped a bomb on humans in this world is America. America starts wars first, they interfere in a lot of countries, they, they, they go to many countries, they attack they, in many wars, take a look at the, the Vietnam War, they get into so many wars. There's stuff going on in Syria that the ordinary people don't know. The ordinary people, the mass of ordinary people. But the governments, they know what they're doing, they have their secrecy kept away from the publics. We're the public who vote these people in. Some elections are fair, some elections are not fair, some elections are corrupt. So we don't know nothing, we're just the ordinary people who want peace in the world. We want to have an everyday life of happiness, the country to run normal without corruption and without any uh, illegal activities. So I think what's happened here with USA, UK, NATO and Ukraine is pure evil towards Russia. We should respect a country like Russia and be thankful that they have a leader like Vladimir Putin who in my opinion, this week, like I said we all have opinions, I believe is the best leader in the world. Him 
and the New Zealand Prime Minister are my two favourite leaders on the planet. I like the way she runs New Zealand and, and her temperament, her decisions, she, the decisions she makes. I feel safe living in, in um, New Zealand and I feel very safe living in Russia. I just like the way the country is run and the head on Vladimir Putin. He's got a very good head on him, very intelligent. And Vladimir Putin speaks sense, a lot of sense. He listens to what he says properly, compared to, like, say, for instance, what Joe Biden says. And, and, that. and I just disagree with the American politics, not the country and the people, just the politics and the, and the, the, the nature of gun-ridden crime, of violence, killing. I'm not saying it's not killing in Russia or anywhere else, but America is driven hard with killings. And also our country, the UK where I come from, we've got history of, of imperialism, slavery. And, but that's the past. I put that to the past. But when you still behave in, in the same manner now in the modern times and you want to send troops to, to um, Ukraine and weapons to kill the Russians, I find it very um, unsettling. I would have thought that Britain would use its power to try and trigger off a peaceful agreements or back out. Like when you have a group, like say for instance, if you're in a nightclub and there's a fight between one person, between two people, and you get one person, another person trying to get involved with the argument, and you're drinking, and you get another person getting involved with the argument, you have a bigger fight. The fight is this large. So one fight which starts off small ends up into a mass brawl. And it's the same way this can end up into a third world war very easily. And we could all, it's all, this could be the end of the planet. And what I'm saying is here, right, is um, Ru Ru Russia is um, in their right to be practicing military drills on the doorstep of Ukraine because they feel insecure of what's happening. Basically, all this um, tension and worry could be ended with just one, um, a few decisions made by the Ukra Ukrainian leader and the Western NATO alliance, including the USA, who is a big country and have a powerful influence. Russia has good reason to believe that NATO is moving in closer to their borders, planting NATO weapons in their garden, which is a threat to their security. Russia has every right, and I'll prove it, Russia has every right to defend themselves and to watch over their security the security encroachment upon their garden by NATO, US, UK, etc. Please, I'm telling the UK, my country I come from, and USA, and NATO, please leave Russia alone. Leave them to deal with Ukraine themselves. After all, Ukraine is sister, family, brother, cousin to Russia. Yes, I understand that Ukraine has its own government, but they are linked with Russia. And when it comes to security, you can't discard the concerns of the Russian for worrying um, about weapons being planted so close to their border, especially as weapon technology gets significantly more advanced. And you don't trust your neighbor on your back doorstep. Come on, use your brain. What's wrong with you people? You, you, the Ukraine has a young leader, a prime minister, who I think is brain dead. He has no common sense. He doesn't care about his people. I'm saying that he does not care about his people. And the reason why I say he doesn't care about his people, he'd rather go to war against the Russians and not use his fixed skull, his brain, and to realize the Russians' concern and to arrive at some compromise. Compromise, young man. Ukrainian leader, compromise, see the bigger picture, use some depth and don't be dumb. Russia, security, think about it. America can't be trusted by the Russia, by the Russians. The same way the, the, the America don't trust the Russians, so we know this. So therefore there is a, there's mistrust. So you have to keep up your security wall there, just like a, a Windows firewall. So just in case you underestimate the other, there's no surprises. So Russia is in its right to be mounting troops on the border of Ukraine to lift up its military exercises, 
and, and then uh, give a demand to the USA, NATO and the UK as to what it wants. And I believe what they're asking for is 100% fair. 100% fair. And easily, easily could be given to the, the Russians. If very easy. And just imagine the result of that will be a peaceful world, eh? A peaceful world. Then you have Russian gas coming through. Coming through to the UK. We'll have a warm winters, lower bills. Now, could you imagine this? We create our own problems. The politicians are right now. The politicians are creating uh, uh, problems for all the normal people on this planet. They're creating problems. The politicians are not using their brain, and they're making life hell for us, and they're making the world more dangerous for us. Okay, Vladimir Putin is is an exception. He's got a fair demand. What he's asking for is fair. If you search into your thoughts and just meditate, go out in the middle of the countryside or something, and cut away from all media and just think about it properly. Think about what um, Vladimir Putin is asking for, and look at what NATO is doing, moving closer to all these Baltic regions, planting weapons there, weapons there, moving closer. And it's not just the weapons; it's their culture. You remember, Russia's Russia's got a different culture. I actually, I, in my opinion, I actually preferred when Russia was the Soviet Union. I just loved there to be balance in this world. I love America to be its own power, UK to be its own power, Europe to be its own power. I love the mighty power of Russia. I just love it. I love the power of Russia. So, when you take away balance, you're going to have some real problems in this world. When the world is balanced, I mean balance of power, balance of weapons, balance of thinking minds, you have a peaceful world. When you don't have balance in this world, one power, especially former enemies of a Cold War, encroaches on on one another, and don't consider the others uh, of concern, discard the others' concern, and think about themselves and push yourself onto them, drop some lethal, horrible sanctions on Russia. Horrible sanctions. They use a, sanctions as a weapon. People are already suffering around the world and you're putting sanctions on that country. Why not instead use that country as part of your economy and help them circulate the economy, share it all over. Can you imagine how much we'll benefit if we had Russia as part of our um, market, their, their business, they, they were as, as part of us. We shared things, we bought Russian products, we sold them Mars. Oh, can you imagine this world how beautiful it would be? At Russian restaurants here, more of them, and we had more more of our restaurants in Russia too. We can exchange with each other, students, more freely. We're not always blocking secrecy like we got guards over ourselves. Because after all, we're all humans. Russia just Russians are like a human, just like us, but just with a different culture. But different culture makes it exciting. Do you see a different people, different languages. Здравствуйте, здравствуйте. They have different languages they can they can speak, different menus. It's just it's just amazing what human beings are doing. We've got this fantastic planet, a real real planet. And it's a video I want to watch you to watch. I'm going to put it in the link, and you're going to see why we're so lucky to have this planet. I think it's called the end of times. I'm going to put it in the link so you can watch. But the reason why I reckon this planet has not ended right now is because Russia's got a good leader Vladimir Putin his brain is so good Vladimir Putin is not a warmonger he's not a wrong warmonger he's a, a, a man who wants stability in his own country he wants stability in his country and he'll do anything for anyone who tries to disrupt that um, disability um, that peace and stability and you had that um, a dissident leader who opposed him and tried to um, bring the country down. Yeah, he is um, Alexei Navalny. Now he's a lawyer and an anti-corruption activity act activist. And let me tell you something about governments. Like I said, they've got people who run the country and the normal people. In all forms of government, there is corruption. Now what we should be worried about is the level of corruption involved in each government around the country and how it affects their people. Like I said, to my knowledge, this, you've got to refer to my knowledge because what I know is my knowledge, not others. 
is um, from what I know and what I feel is Vladimir Putin is doing the best job any leader can do to steer Russia in the right direction and like I said you can't have a hundred people running the country and taking decisions you have disagreements all, all over the place and you end up having a fight and getting nowhere there's got to be some sacrifices and I just believe that Vladimir Putin is doing the best job yes I'm sorry for what's happened to Alexei Navalny and I hope he recovers I hope he comes out and I actually hope he supports the government I hope he goes and he, he works with Vladimir Putin and not against him because when you have these kind of oppositions like this with Alexei Navalny you have mass civil unrest in a country and this will bring Russia down make Russia weaker when you have weakness then you have the Americans and NATO move in and you have real dangerous situations of World War 3 and nuclear Armageddon on our doorstep I'm going to prove to you that what we are doing to Russia is not fair Ukraine tensions NATO sends ships and fighter jets to Eastern Europe. NATO has announced it is sending additional ships and fighter jets to existing bases in Eastern Europe. To so see we've got existing bases, listen to this one. This proves Vladimir Putin's point. NATO has existing bases in Eastern Europe. Eastern Europe, we have bases there on Russia's doorstep already. And they want to move into Ukraine and put weapons on Ukraine right in Russia's back garden. Come on, Russia's not going to have that. Russia's not going to have that. If I was Russia, I wouldn't have it. And if it's us, we wouldn't have it either. And I'm going to give you an example. We have a possibility of a Scottish refer referendum. Okay, And one in which the Scottish are very likely to win because of our government is in Tassus with Boris Johnson running it. Now, suppose it, the, the Scottish wins the referendum and the, the, the UK breaks up. Okay? Scotland runs their own country themselves. Now, Scotland used to be part of the UK, like a brother and sister, cousin, family, eh? You understand? The family to the UK. The UK once Cold War rivals to Russia like America was not to me I always loved Russia even in the worst of the Cold War I've always loved Russia I love all countries in, countries in the world there should be no barriers and enemies so Scotland Nicholas Sturgeon decided to invite Vladimir Putin and say I want weapons on my soil I want nuclear weapons I want Russian troops on my soil right on the UK's doorstep can you understand my point? can you understand where I'm coming from? right on our doorstep nuclear weapons right in there where they can strike us just like that from Moscow by push of a button they can launch a weapon right on the UK or to load tanks they can just march into the country just like that can you see Vladimir Putin's point? I say no more so NATO has announced it's sending additional ships and fighter jets to existing bases in Eastern Europe. Existing bases in Eastern Europe. I'm going to have to report. I'd like to keep repeating this part. As well as putting extra troops on standby as tensions escalate in Ukraine. Now, I say tensions in, uh, escalate in Ukraine. The media can be pushing this up. Right? Listen to the media. The me things in real life, the real world, could not be like well, how bad you think it is. But the media could be pushing this up so everyone's like panicking and think all oh, the Russians are coming in and, and, and you think about what's happening here. The media is poison. Yeah, I'm not saying the Russians are not there on the border, as the picture shows, but their intentions could be exaggerated. So and, and on as um, tensions escalate in Ukraine. So the move is designed to enhance deterrence and defense in Europe. What defense? We're the ones attacking. We're the aggressors by moving people into into uh, bases into in, into Europe, encroaching onto Russia, and then we want to NATO, um, Ukraine to join NATO. Come and see its craziness. We're the ones who are aggression aggressive. Russia needs to put its defenses up against us. 
NATO will continue to take all necessary measures to protect and defend all allies. What kind of crap is this? Protect what? The Russians are not e e attacking us. It's a NATO which is attacking them. So you're putting Russia on the defensive, on the, de on the defensive, which is very scary. It says by re reinforcing the eastern part of the alliance. The eastern part should even be there. They should be in the western part. They shouldn't be in the eastern part. No weapons, nothing there. It is absolutely ridiculous. Look at his weapons sending to, to Russia and kill Russian people. Look at that. Evil, evil, evil. It's just my opinion. I'm, I don't like it. I actually believe that all this will make Russia invade Ukraine. All of because they'll get in there before Europe can get in there and um, plant their weapons in fully and get their things stuck in before Europe can get stuck in Ukraine and give Russia no chance or make it harder. But what's going to happen in the end is going to be nuclear war because Russia's backed into a corner. You put Russia in a corner where they can't move nowhere. So Russia will still bite back with a nuclear weapon. When a nuclear weapon comes, just let it land in my head. I will understand. I will understand why they sent a nuclear weapon. Thank God this whole world um, could survive or something from this mess. But human beings are dumb. They're very dumb. He says Russian invasion and said, um, he says Boris Johnson warned on Monday that the intelligence is pretty gloomy about the possibility of an imminent Russian invasion and said that such a move would be a painful violence and bloody business. Yeah, bloody business, a nuclear business, it'd be flipping messy all, all worldwide. This is something that escalates into a world war with ease, third world war, and the UK will be sunk with all its weapons. We've got no match for Russia, we have no match for them. And the world is no match for all these nuclear, nuclear bombs when they fall on us, all of us. So all what, you, all what you're fighting for, to push into Ukraine, and put and bully them and, and put make Russia feel insecure will backfire with a complete nuclear Armageddon. All people get wiped out. Like I said, I'm going to show you a video and you'll see how lucky we are to have this planet. Human beings, I just don't understand them. This is, I hope this thing, I hope, I hope the West sees sense, the UK and Americans. And and see, I know I know Joe Biden. He 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 knows. That's why he's not pushing for nuclear. He's but look at the actions of Joe Biden. He's getting caught, uh, slated for it. Joe Biden says it depends what Russia does. As where we going to attack? And he knows that going into Ukraine and sending U.S. forces there is going to be likely to trigger a third world war. You're going to see a nuclear bomb drop. Window, you'll just see a bright light come through your front room or wherever you are working or, or enjoying your holiday. A nice bright glow will fry you with high intensity radiation, just like an x ray. It fry to the floor before the blast wave hits you and the force of that wind with radioactive dust just flattens the whole city, country, life as we know it. Just like that. You'll think about edgy politicians when you have a chance to have a peaceful world and when you have a destructive world you have no chance to stop it no chance what I want you to do is to remember Stalingrad the sacrifice the Russians took for the West during the Second World War the Russians faced a gruesome battle defending their country from the German Nazis of Hitler. It was a great struggle, great sacrifice and unbelievable losses of Russian people, civilians and troops. This is why Russia is the way it is. It never wants to go for this again. Scotland decides to go for independence. They win independence. So Scotland 
gets an invitation from Russia to plant weapons on this soil and join Russia as an economic power and military power. Scotland agrees. They sign a, an agreement and they join Russia with weapons pointed towards the UK, London. Wales decides to go for independence. Now Scotland, Scotland's got independence. Wales decided to join, decides to join the Eastern Bloc. They have an invitation from Russia to join the Eastern Pack of the old Soviet states and have Russian technology and weapons planted on their soil pointing towards the UK and the West. Ireland, they decide to invite Russia and have Russian weapons on Irish soil pointing towards the UK and America. So now you can understand Vladimir Putin's point of view. He had enough of NATO moving forward towards Russia right in his garden and so his um, military exercises is just an uh, uh, example of readiness in case things get out of hand because things are already getting out of hand with NATO moving forward NATO expanding the West are behaving ridiculous the country which I come from UK England are also behaving ridiculous supplying weapons to Ukraine and also not standing up for Russia and understanding Russia's point of view. Ukraine is part of the Russia, the old Soviet bloc. We in the UK are playing with fire. America also are playing with fire and NATO. Russia is no small country and what Vladimir Putin is asking for is not unreasonable, not in my opinion. Maybe this news is reporting things that is not as bad as what it really is. It's what I believe. They want to keep you in low frequency, afraid, scared. You want to be in Stalingrad in that war and you'll see fear. A special thank you from the heart.